Today on the workbench, we have the Texan 2P3 AM radio kit I found on Amazon. I've always wanted to learn IF alignment and thought building a complete radio would help me start the journey. I think that might be Chairman Mao. So let's get it open and see what's inside. We have all the parts here. A box to hold the finished radio and the instructions. The instructions fold out into a giant coffee table sized document which makes it difficult to use on the workbench. They recommend building one section at a time, moving right to left. The first step is to break off this little daughter board that holds the volume control. All right, now let's get this in a safe place. I've mounted the circuit board on this holder. It brings everything closer to the eyes and makes it easy to flip back and forth. Let's start with R12 the first component on the top left of the audio amplifier section. And let's get C14 in next. C14, the shaded area is negative, so it goes in like this. This full build is a long video, so I put in chapter markers so you can skip to the parts that are most helpful to you. The 9-pin IC has the notch to the left. All right, that should be it for the audio amplifier section. I'm going to put the battery and speaker in last. Now we're moving on to the detector portion. Let's start with C15. Well, I think that finishes the detector section. Now moving on to the second IF amp. Again, let's start at the top, this time with R8. All right, that should do it for the second IF amp section. Now let's move on to the first IF amp section. Let's put R6 in first. Orange silicon putty can be helpful to hold components in place. All right, that finishes the first IF amp section. Now to the final section, mixing. Let's start with R4.
There's not too many components left. All right, it looks like we have all the components in place. Let's get the battery on. Well, they sure give you a lot of wire. Now let's get this battery box attached. All right, let's move on to the volume control. It's done in two steps. First step is to attach the volume control to the daughter board. Then we get the three leads soldered in. All right, then he just slides into here like that. Okay, that should do. Let's move on to the antenna now. First step is to attach the holder. So let's get that screwed in. So these antenna wires are very delicate. They are color coded. One side has four leads, the other side has two. So that must be these two spots here. God, is that green? These might be the red and green wires for five and six. I need a yellow and a black for one and two. It's probably this, yellow, black, red, Green, maybe. And then three and four should be two yellows. Boy, those don't look like yellow, but it must be them. Let's get these things slid through here. These wires are so tiny. I feel like soldering them one at a time just so that they don't keep moving and falling out. So maybe there's one. Number two is supposed to be a black wire. Okay, number six is a green wire. He looks pretty green to me. I bet he goes in here like this. Number five is a red wire. And finally, the last one, number one. Well, I guess I have the antenna attached. Now let's move on to the final step, which is to get the speaker on.
Well, it's built. I hope it works. But before we can turn it on, we have to check out three different test points. There's three test points where they want us to check the current on before we finish the radio. This is IC1. Supposed to be, let's see what we got here. 0.36, and they're looking for something between 0.3 and 0.6. So I guess that's good. All right, IC2 is right here. They want something between 0.3 and 0.6. Well, that's right in the middle, that's good. And finally, IC3, which is down here. They want something between 0.5 and 0.1, 0.5 and 1. 0.63, that's between 0.5 and 1. So the radio seems to be working correctly. So now we have to bridge these gaps that were put in to test the current. I cut off an old lead here to help this guy move along a little bit. That guy's easy to bridge. And finally, I see three. Let's get these knobs attached. Don't miss your chance. Visit alignmenthelpland.com today. Wow. No alignment and we got noise. All right, let's get him soldered on. Let's attach the post. All right, let's align this radio. I rotated the station dial below 530 and I'm putting in a 455 kilohertz signal. I'm carefully rotating the black transformer and then switching to the yellow. All right, I think that's pretty close. Let's put out a 600 kilohertz signal to set the lower end of the dial. Hopefully that's it. All right, let's get the high end set. Let's put the dial on around 1400, maybe there. That's pretty close. Let's go back to the 600 kilohertz signal. That looks right. I think the radio is officially aligned. Let's get these temporary attachments off the speaker and build the radio. Let's get these speaker wires reattached in a way that doesn't melt anything on the case. They are not very long. All right. It's hard to demonstrate, but these antennas seem to create the loudest signal when they were pushed out to their outer positions. It says to fix it with wax. I have this birthday candle and an old soldering iron tip. 
wonder if that's going to work. That might work. All right, let's get the back on. Looks like there's a little double stick tape here to put on the logo, so let's do that. And they suggest gluing this or using another double stick tape, but they don't provide it. I think I'm just going to put a drop of glue right here. Well, thank you for watching. This is a great kit and I had a lot of fun building it and I learned a ton. Please subscribe. I'll be making more. And if you see something I missed, please leave a comment. Thank you so much and I'll see you on the next one.